Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call us right now for more help at 866-945-8070. Hey, Seth David here from the World Famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, and I want to talk to you about how to start or restart, grow and scale your accounting or bookkeeping practice. How to grow and scale your your firm of today, and it is a firm of today, the future's here, time to face that, right? Um, Before I get into this, I want to kind of preface this the same way I did in the actual write-up. The write-up's going to have more information than I'm going to cover in the video. Otherwise, I'll be holding you hostage here for an hour, which I don't plan to do. Heck, my camera can only record for 20 minutes. It's a good way to force me to keep it concise. This is an outline. It's a detailed outline. My hope is not that you'll read it through once and say, oh, yeah, that was cool, and maybe even share it, although I'd love for you to do that. My hope is that you'll bookmark it and come back to it and treat it as a resource. When I read books these days, I, I, I don't even like to use the word read anymore. I study them which means I go through a book or I go through a piece of a book and I take notes on it. And then I look at what I've just taken notes on it and I ask myself, how am I going to implement this in my practice? In fact, that goes to the very core of literally how 97 and Up as a program was born. It was born based on me reading a book called The One Minute Millionaire and running into a section of it where they're talking about how millionaires have very structured lives in terms of time. They manage their time every bit as well as they manage their money. And I looked at that, and they broke it down into six major areas, body, mind, spirit, time, people, and money. And I looked at those six areas, and I laid them out on a spreadsheet. This wasn't from the book. This was my own way of of taking what I learned and, and implementing it in my life. And I built an outline for how to run my business based on that because it included those six areas, which meant it included all the balance that I need. You know, and there was a time where I started buying into this work-life integration concept where, you know, you just integrate it all. And, and, and now I've turned back around on that. And I feel like that's, that's, that's bullshit. Let's, let's just call it what it is. It's, there is an important need to be balanced because what I found is when I follow the structure that I built for myself, which is now built into our program, um, I'm much more effective in a lot less in, in a lot fewer hours, right? When I'm well rested and well balanced, it, even though I'm working less hours, I probably get twice as much done, if not more, because I'm so much better focused during the hours that I am working, because I'm not working 80 hours a week. I'm working pretty much eight to four every day. But let's stay focused on how to start or restart, grow and scale your accounting firm, your firm of today, right? But again, I just wanted to make sure that it's clear that this is not something I expect you to just go through once. I expect you to bookmark it and take notes. And hopefully you can use what I'm giving you here without having to go any further and just make your own interpretations for how to take this and put it into practice and run with it. But if not, I've built this very outline that you're watching me discuss now in this video and that you're reading on my website based specifically around the outline for our 97 and up program. So if at any point you think you might need more help, for only 97 bucks a month, I'm going to be increasing it, by the way, to 197 But if you're in at 97 you stay at 97 So whether it's 97 or 197 I'm very confident that I'd be hard-pressed to believe anybody would look at this, experience it, go through it, even for a month, and tell me that it's not worth every penny and a whole lot more. So we're going to give you the outline, but I want you to use this as a resource, not just as something you read and go through once. Right Now, why did I do this? I felt there was a need for an updated resource. The accounting fundamentals haven't changed in 20 years or more, but the landscape has changed dramatically. So if you're going to go out and buy a book that teaches you the accounting fundamentals and debits and credits, no, that hasn't changed. But if you're going to buy a book that's going to teach you how to take those fundamentals and package them up into a firm of today in the current landscape, then you're going to need something that's more up to date. And you're going to need something that's agile. You're going to need to learn how to be agile as a firm. And you're going to need a resource that's agile. And I don't think a book is the right platform for that kind of agility because things happen way too fast. And so I felt it was important to put this in a platform like this one, like video and posts on my website, so that when something emerges, when a new technology comes out, a new way of doing things comes out, I can be quick. I can learn it. I can produce a video and get it up quickly. Publishing a book or another edition of a book takes time. And then by the time I get that published, things have already changed again. So that's the impetus of this. That's what I'm hoping you'll start to see and start to get out of this. So starting your accounting practice or starting it over, we're going to need a plan. 
And by the way, if, if it's still before November of 2017 when you're watching this, this is what I'm going to be talking about at QuickBooks Connect this year. So go to quickbooksconnect.com, sign up, and go to my session on the first day, which is going to be Wednesday at 11 a.m. And you'll get to see me go through how I outline this whole plan. We need a plan. We need to know how we're going to price our services. I see a lot of colleagues of ours struggling in this area because they're being given a platform for pricing that works really well, but the, the, um, the implementation of it for how to come up with the pricing is infinitely complicated from what I've seen. And there are people who've developed programs that you need a whole program to help you figure out your pricing. To me, that's ridiculous. I have a plan for how to come up with your pricing that I think you're gonna find is it makes so much more sense, it's so easy to implement, and you'll be done with it in maybe a half an hour. Because it's based on this, and, and this is simple. How much money do you want to make dollar one gross this year? How many clients do you think you can handle regular monthly clients? And of course, in order to answer that, we have to define another thing, which is what's the core service we want to offer on a monthly basis? What would that include? Think about that. Think about the stuff you'd want to be doing for clients day in and day out, week in and week out. And that's what you use to define your core service. Then, of course, it's simple math. Take the dollar one gross revenue goal divided by the number of monthly clients you can handle, and you have your um, annual revenue per client. Divide that by 12. Now you have your middle monthly plan. And then you scale it down, take a few things away for a lower plan, and you, you add things in and come up with an outrageously high higher tier so that you can you kind of want to scare people away from that because really what you want is that middle plan focused on. And I can guarantee you with my system for coming up with your flat rate pricing, it's going to take you a fraction of the time and it's going to be a fraction of the difficulty in terms of figuring out how to come up with it. Then we're going to build the plan. How many clients do we want to have? How many new clients are we going to get each month for each service and at each, at each level, at each tier? And I've got the template already built. All you have to do is plug the numbers in for how you want to build your practice. And everything flows into a monthly goal and then a daily goal. And we have a system for tracking that that helps keep you focused because you're looking at it every day and seeing where am I at on the timeline and how close am I to reaching my goal for the month. And that's where the focus part comes in. The system, if you stick with it, and of course it's always up to you, you get out of it what you put into it, but the system's going to force you to focus and stay focused on your goal. So that's the plan. That's the planning and that's the focus. That's the discipline, right? Building your money site, a course in WordPress, right? Of course I'm a strong believer in using WordPress because it's easy and lots of people use it. The best thing I ever did was hire Shane McFarlane from X Digital to redesign my website this year. And if you have the budget, then hire him. Let him do it. He's a professional. He knows what he's doing. And he also knows our industry because he's also an accountant. And in fact, he built a company years ago that he sold to Intuit. So this is the guy you want working on your website. I promise you. If you have the budget, hire him to do it. But you also need to learn how to use WordPress yourself. Because once the site's built, there's going to be so much more you're going to want to know how to do with it. And you don't want to have to be dependent on someone else to do it. Not to mention you don't want to have to always pay somebody else to do it. So there's a balance here. Again, you want, you want to hire somebody like him to do the site if you've got the budget. And then you want to learn enough to know how to tweak it yourself so you can add products and add content, which is what we're going to get into next. right? And so you can keep building and growing your practice without, without the friction of having to wait for somebody else to do something. So that brings us to the next thing, which is how to become a content creation machine. And who better to teach you than me? Anybody who knows me, especially from our industry, knows that this is how I built everything, is based on building content. We're going to show you how to write the blog post. We're going to show you how to edit the blog post. We're going to show you how to optimize it. The act of optimizing it, by the way, is going to make you a better writer. So if you're worried about not being a good writer, don't worry about not being a good writer. Because the more you write, the better you get. And the plugin that we use for optimization will literally teach you how to be a better writer. So you have nothing to worry about there. And once we're creating content, now we have to do some social selling, right? Because people aren't just going to fall onto our content. There's too much going on out there on the web. We have to help them find us by getting involved in social media. So we'll need some tools, and we'll need to know how to use each of the different social media channels that we use in order to make this all come together. And we're going to teach you that in this course. And by the way, the course itself, as of the time I'm recording this, is not entirely published yet. However, the content creation part is about to be. It's likely by the time you're watching this video that that one's already live. But even if it's not up yet, even if what you're looking for isn't live on the course yet, it doesn't matter because we have two weekly calls that all you have to do is show up for and ask the question and we'll spend an hour going through whatever you need. We can get real specific about you and what your needs are. So social selling, we'll need to start learning how to use social media to marry the audience 
with our content, right? Then we have the networking aspect, which is more social media, right? Building that digital Rolodex and learning how to use a CRM that's built well to integrate our email and our calendar so that all of our interactions with our clients and prospects is right there in one place. If you're spending time copying and pasting information into your CRM, then you're using the wrong CRM. You should never be doing that. And that brings us to the next part, which is email marketing, which by the way, means creating more content on a weekly basis. Follow the greatest people in social media. I guarantee you none of them are people in our industry, in the accounting industry. They're people like Gary Vaynerchuk and people like Chris Brogan and Chris Perillo and Tim Ferriss. These are the guys you want to follow and learn from if you want to learn how to do social media really well. These guys do it, and there's a simple formula. You're not going after a million followers. You're going after a thousand connections who are going to amplify you a thousand times each, and a thousand times a thousand equals a million. We're all math people here in the bookkeeping field, I hope. I can't imagine somebody being a bookkeeper and not being good with numbers, but I, I imagine they're out there. Um, anyway, you get the point. Um, a thousand people. You want a thousand good quality people in your audience who are going to amplify you all day long and every day because they can't get enough. Email marketing is still the most effective. It's still the thing that it's the most intimate. <clears throat> it's where you're actually having that conversation that, the, that you're out there in social media trying to start. Right? The whole goal in social media is to start a conversation. Email is where, where you really get to carry that conversation on. And whether you have just the, the, the obvious benefits of building a network and, and, and getting to know more people, or you're lucky enough for somebody to actually want to go on and hire you for your services, you're still getting tremendous benefits from all of this, I promise you. And once we're able to create all this buzz by learning how to create content and using social media to amplify it, building a network to amplify it, now we have to worry about how to onboard clients. And I've got you covered there too. Because what you'll want to do is write a very detailed outline. Every email that needs to go out, every document that needs to be signed, everything in that process is outlined in excruciating detail so that then we can look at some of the automation tools that are available to you to help automate this process. And there are going to be new tools that we're going to look at. And again, that goes back to the beauty of this particular platform, the web, because I can easily learn a new tool, jump in there, and publish it for you so that you can learn about it without having to wait for me to publish another edition of another book. Next, of course, we look at practice management. How are we going to manage our practice? With apps, of course. We're going to use project management applications. We're going to use file management applications. And all of it, I mean all of it, has to be in the cloud. Otherwise, you're losing efficiency, I guarantee you. So we're going to use pure cloud-based apps, including our own email. If you're still using Microsoft Outlook, I'm sorry, even Office 365, I've played with it over the years. I used Outlook for years, years ago. It's clunky you've got to get into G Suite and start using Gmail. Everybody I know who's made that switch, starting with myself, has said at a certain point that they will never, ever look back. So we're going to use all cloud-based apps. We're going to get efficient because once we start charging flat monthly fees, that's what it's all about, is efficiency. And make no mistake because there are those who are going to tell you that it's not about efficiency, it's about effectiveness. Bullshit. Here's what it's really about. The more efficient you get, the more time you have to review everything and make sure that you've done your job effectively. So don't let anybody tell you that it's not about efficiency. It's about efficiency all day long. I was about to use, I was about to drop an F-bomb on you. Client management, of course, is the next thing. While we're managing our practice, we've got to manage our clients. So I'm going to give you one word that's actually not in the write-up. I might have to go back and add it in. Slack. Period. Dot. The end. Slack is how I manage my clients because I manage the communications with my clients using Slack. And the bottom line is with Slack, I can be way behind on my work, but I don't try and bullshit my clients. I communicate with them. I let them know where they're at. Not only don't they get mad at me, they thank me. And they know that if I tell them I'm going to make the time to get caught up, that I'll make the time to get caught up. Or I'll employ whatever resources I need to to make sure that it happens. I have not, not only haven't I lost any clients since I've been doing this, I haven't even had them get mad at me. I've had them thank me even when I've been behind on their work. And I've been behind on their work. I'm only human most powerful tool you can learn to do, you learn to employ when you're managing clients is the tool of listening. Take the cotton out of your ears, stick it in your mouth. Too many thought leaders in our industry, and I've worked with some of them firsthand, so I've seen this firsthand. They think they already know everything, and they think they know what question you're going to ask before you've even asked it. Before you've finished the question, they're not even listening to you anymore. They're already formulating their answer to your question, if you can even get a word in edgewise with them, by the way. So just pay attention to who you're following and, and, and learn by those examples how you want to deal with your clients. When my client's talking to me, I'm not. It's that simple. If my client interrupts me, I will clam up and listen to what they have to say because I want to hear everything they have to say because I know that the more I listen to what they have to say, the better position I'm going to be in 
to prescribe the best solution for them. So listening, most important tool ever. If you find yourself dealing with somebody who's clearly not listening to you, just run away. Just run away. Um, E-commerce, back to WooCommerce, WordPress, your own website, another reason why you need to learn how to use this stuff beyond hiring somebody to design it, because we're in the advisory age, which means we're going to be creating more of these info products, templates, eBooks, whatever it is, you're going to want to be able to do this kind of stuff because that's another way to grow and scale your business is to sell what's in here. So please, 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 WooCommerce with WordPress. Not only that, but going back to client management, you're not going to keep a card on file and charge their card manually each month because now you're actually doing something manually each month, which is totally inefficient, not to mention the PCI compliance, which most of you are probably not even in compliance if you're keeping people's cards on file. If you're still having them fax you a form with a credit card number on it, God forbid, I hope you're not doing that. It's really simple. In WordPress, you create a subscription product. You have them sign up for that subscription. Their card gets charged every month. You don't have their card information on file. You don't have to worry about PCI compliance. Your processors do that, PayPal, Stripe, whomever you want to end up using to process payments. It's really easy to set up, and it's, it's a lot fewer headaches, and it's, it's the right way to automate a business, especially talking about being a firm of today. If you're not doing this kind of stuff, then I'm sorry. You're not a firm of today. You're not a firm of the future. You're a firm of yesterday. So it's really, really important, I think, that we kind of get and stay up to speed with this kind of stuff. Finally, the reporting, please. That's the ultimate output of your practice, especially being in the advisory age. And stop thinking that you can't show your clients these reports. I know there's a lot of beautiful products that, that give you gorgeous dashboards that are designed and sold to you on the basis that it makes it easy for the client to understand. But please, it's easy for the client to understand a balance sheet and profit and loss. And as the accounting professional, you're going to thank me for this. You'll want to teach them how to read those two basic statements, at least enough so they know what questions to ask you so that you can review things when needed in more detail. And here's what happens. It goes back to the, uh, you know, the, the whole question of uh, communication and using things like Slack. I use Zoom with the clients. I log in remotely with them. In the beginning of the relationship, they'll need more of my time. They'll need to go through it in more detail. But the more I teach them, the less time they need. And the easier it makes my job as the accounting professional because now I can focus on the more important things because they know what questions to ask. And it's not the elementary stuff anymore. It's the stuff that really matters. It's the stuff that gives me the opportunity to, pro to provide amazing value to the client. And that's where this all ends. The only thing after that in my 97 and up program and course, which is why it doesn't quite end here, is I'm going to give you a reading list of books that I've used to develop this program and to develop myself on an ongoing and continuing basis. So if you want a program that's not going to go away after 12 weeks or whatever it is, ongoing and permanent, just like you and your business, then I think 97 and up is going to be the right program for you. In the meantime, I hope that this outline that I've provided you here will provide you with a great resource that many of you might even be able to use just by itself for fun and for free. Have at it and you know where to find me if you've got any questions.